Please title these notes, Graphs 2 Notes Vocabulary, and write today's date. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to define key vocabulary for functions, use a three-line chart to summarize the characteristics of a graph, and sketch a graph from its three-line chart. Please start off by taping or pasting the figure 1 in your notes. Go ahead, write like that. What we're going to do is we're going to define each of these terms. I'm going to write them all out for starters. We want to define where f of x, so this is f of x, this is x. We want to define where f of x has a positive value. negative value zero value this is also called a root or an x-intercept constant value we want to know when f of x is increasing when f of x is decreasing, when f of x has what's called a relative minimum, a relative maximum, oh, there's relative maximum, when f of x is concave up, concave down and has an inflection point. You probably know the definition for a lot of these already. In a second I'm going to have you pause the video and write in the definitions that you already remember. We want to have both a verbal definition and a little drawing. Go ahead and try filling that in. Pause the video now. Okay, you're back. Let's go ahead and fill these in together. Make sure you got everything. So positive value simply means that f of x or actually let's say the curve is above the x-axis. So let's remind ourselves what that means. Just make a little picture right there. And if we look up on this graph right here, we can see a couple places where that happens. Over here, between negative 4 and 4, and when x is greater than 8. So uh, let's just pick one of these. Uh, let's go ahead um, between negative 4 and 4, and we'll just say that from here to here, f of x has a positive value. A negative value, just the reverse. Curve is below the x-axis. Same idea with the drawing. There's our x-axis. We're below. And that happens twice on this graph. We'll just pick one say right from here to here, negative value. A zero value where the curve crosses the x-axis, so we can just draw it like that. And there are several points where that happens. We'll just go ahead and pick one. constant value actually isn't shown on this graph. A constant value just means that the curve is horizontal. So that means if we had our little x and y axes here, we would be looking at something here. I'll pick another color. 
like this. That would be f of x having a constant value. Next up, increasing. That just means the curve has a positive slope. Which is to say it's going up. So something like that. Got our little curve there. It's going up. Decreasing the reverse. The curve has a negative slope. meaning it's going down, like so. A relative minimum is the point at which the curve changes from decreasing to increasing. We didn't use that definition last year, but that little picture should look familiar. It's that point right there. Relative maximum is the reverse. The point at which the curve changes from increasing to decreasing. And again, that drawing should look familiar from last year. Concave up, here's where the language itself helps us. That up sounds like a cup shaped. We can see that repetition. Concave up, concave down, dome, like so. And then the inflection point is just the point at which the curve changes concavity. So it can either be from going concave up to concave down, or concave down to concave up. Either way. Let's go back up and fill these in on the graph. Okay, so increasing. We have an increasing function from here to here, and from here to here. Let's go ahead and mark this increasing. Decreasing, there are again a couple places here and here. Let's go ahead and mark this one. Decreasing. Relative minimum here, relative minimum here. Only one relative maximum right up there. We have a couple places where the curve is concave up. From here to about here, it's kind of hard to tell where it switches, but definitely concave up here, concave down here, concave up here. So mark that. Concave down. concave up. And remember the inflection point is where the curve switches concavity. So when we switch from concave up to concave down, there's an inflection point. Oops, my bad. This is not concave down or concave up. I reverse those. It should be concave up and concave down. We still have that inflection point though when it switches from concave down to concave up. 
Now that we've defined the different characteristics of graphs, we need to know how to write down when they occur. So please label this next section in your notes. Uh, you're probably There's a very powerful tool that we can use to summarize uh, the different characteristics that a graph has. So let's look at this, summarizing the characteristics of a graph. Using what we're going to call a three-line chart. So let's just take a little function here. Let's call this f of x. And let's use a three-line chart to summarize the characteristics of the f of x curve. And this is going to be a lot easier if we do it in a particular way. The point of this tool isn't super obvious now, but it's going to be extremely important uh, for the next lesson. So we're going to draw three lines, hence the name. And we're starting at x is negative 2. We're ending at x is 5. And for the first line, we're going to use to summarize where the function is concave up, concave down, or has an inflection point. Remember, an inflection point is where the concavity changes. So if we look on this little graph right here, I see this dome shape here. So that means that f of x is concave down up until it looks like it switches at about 1.5. And after that, it's a cup shape. It's concave up. So my first line is just like that. My second line. I'm going to use to summarize increasing and decreasing. and also relative extrema, that's maxima and minima. Minima is just the plural of minimum, maxima, plural of maxima. So starting here again at negative 2, I can see that the function is increasing going up until we get to x equals 0. Then it's decreasing until we get to x equals 3. And then increasing again until x equals 5. Notice that I've put this 0 in between negative 2 and 1.5. I've put this 3 in between 1.5 and 3. That'll just make things a little bit easier. Then our final level is plus minus. Use bottom line to summarize positive, negative, 
and zeros. Okay, so I can see that f of x is positive up until x equals 2, so 2 is right there. And then it's negative from 2 to 4, and then positive again from 4 to 5. Oops, should be positive. Now I'm going to go back and mark each of these numbers that I've written on the graph in terms of what they are. So, for example, right here, at x equals 2, this is a 0. So is 4, right like that. The change from increasing to decreasing, that's a maximum. From decreasing to increasing, that's a minimum. And then here where concavity changes, that's an inflection point, or IP. So that's what the three-line chart is. It's just summarizing that. And now let's have you try an example. So let's use a three-line chart to summarize the characteristics for the curve G of X below. And so remember the first level of the three-line chart is going to be concave up, concave down, and inflection points. The second level is going to be increasing, decreasing, and extrema. And the third line is going to be plus, minus, uh, and then I guess we can mark over here also zeros, also extrema, and inflection points. So take a second on your own to try to fill those in and then I'll fill them in up here. So pause the video for a second and restart when you're ready. Okay, so I put these little arrows on here because of the little arrows on here. Um, this function is going to keep continuing on forever. Um, and we're looking for concave up, concave down. So this is a dome shape up until we get to where x is negative 3. Then it's a cup shape up until about negative 1. Uh, if you can't quite see, that's okay. We can only approximate it from the graph. There are other more precise ways that we'll get later on. Um, but it should be about negative 3. It should anyway. You can see this is a dome shape here, cup shape there. Dome shape here up until about 2 and then cup shape for the rest. So wherever these switch, there's an inflection point. Now for the extrema, that's increasing and decreasing. So g of x is increasing, increasing, increasing up until we get to where x equals 1. Decreasing until x equals 3 and then increasing again after that. That means we've got a maximum when g of x switches from increasing to decreasing and a minimum when g of x switches from decreasing to increasing. Finally, positive, negative, and zeros. At x equals negative 5, there's a 0. At x equals 3, there's another 0. We can see that g of x is below the x-axis, so it's negative here. Then it's above the x-axis here, above the x-axis here. And there we go. We've done the summary. We can also use a three-line chart to sketch a graph. Use the three line chart below to sketch a possible graph of f of x. So here's our three line chart.
This is just given to you in the problem. Okay, and let's go ahead and put our little axes here. So this is going to be an approximate sketch. So we notice the numbers we have are 0, uh, 1, and 2. So we're not going to need all that much. Let's go out 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, negative 3, there. This is going to be f of x. So we know a couple of things. It's generally easiest if we work from bottom to top. So we know that there are zeros, that means that y equals 0 at 0 and 2. We know that this part over here is going to be above the x-axis from that positive. This part in between is negative. This part in between is positive. So it's going to go something like this, this. That matches what we see here. We're going to have something that's decreasing until we get to 1. At 1, it's going to turn around and start increasing. And we know from here that it's going to be that cup shape for the entire graph. So that means we're going to have sort of a smooth cup shape, decreasing until 1, increasing after that. Something like that. You can probably do a concave curvy cup shape a little bit better than I can. Um, but the general idea, concave up, decreasing, increasing, plus, minus, plus. Let's have you try one of those on your own. Use the three-line chart to sketch a possible graph of the function. And let's call this function g of x. This is beginning at negative 3, ending at 4. At negative 1, there's an inflection point. Concave up on this side, concave down on that side. From negative 3 to negative 2, the function is decreasing. Then there's a little minimum. Then it's increasing until 1. There's a maximum. Then it's decreasing again until 4. The function will be positive until negative 2, where there's a 0. However, after that, it's positive again until 3, after which it's negative until 4. Okay, pause the video for a second and go ahead and try to sketch a graph of that. Start the video again when you're ready. Okay, let's see what we've got here. First of all, is that we know that this is going to start at negative 3, end at 4, so it's not going to have the little arrows like we did in the previous one. We know that at negative 2, there's a 0. At 3, there's a 0. This graph is above the x-axis over here, and then below the x-axis from 3 to 4. So let's see what happens here. At negative 2, there's a minimum. So we've got some decreasing and then increasing again and then decreasing again all the way down here until 4. This has a cup shape followed by a dome shape. So when we put it all together we should have a sort of a cup shape here down to this minimum. And then we still have a cup shape, but it's going up instead, up until negative 1. And then at negative 1, we're still going up, increasing, 
but there's an inflection point. So now I've got a dome shape. So we're going to have a dome shape like that up until 1, where we've got a maximum. And then we've got a dome shape going down until positive 4. Oops, excuse me, my bad. This uh, should end at negative 3. So that means it really ought to be ending there. Like so. This concludes these notes.